This is the FIBA Basketball World Cup, and it is the second semifinal between Argentina and France. There's the bracket we just watched. Spain win a double overtime thriller over Australia, 95 to 88. So they advance to the title game, trying to get their hands on the Naismith Trophy. Australia will play the loser of this game uh, in a third place contest. Uh, France, uh, I guess you could say, has the distinction of being the team that has knocked off the United States. Uh, in the quarterfinals, uh, preventing them from winning a third consecutive world title. I'm Jeff Taylor, joined by Josh Davis. And uh, but Josh, we just hit the jackpot, really. We're just watching one good game after another. Yeah, these last few days of the World Cup have been electrifying. Uh, it seems like a lot of these teams have stepped up on the biggest stage, whether obviously it was France against Team USA, Argentina against Serbia, two quote-unquote upsets. Uh, international basketball, but obviously either one of these teams can take home that Naismith Trophy. They've proven it, and now they have to prove it against one another. Well, we both just sat through a packed uh, press conference with Kobe Bryant, the uh, USA uh, two-time Olympic champion who talked about why it was so important that he was here, why he wanted to be here to spread kind of the gospel that really this is a beautiful game, all the passing, the cutting, the teamwork, the pride in the national teams, and, and we've been seeing it on the court. It doesn't matter what game, what group, uh, who's playing, uh, we see it, and we've seen it from France against the United States, and now we're about to see it also again, once again, uh, from Argentina, who pulled that incredible victory off against Serbia. Yeah, it was one of the games of the tournament without a question. Uh, you know, 97 to 87, uh, Argentina pretty much dominated that game from start to finish. Um, obviously, Facundo Campaso, you know, if you didn't know his name then, you should definitely know it by now because he put on a show. 18 points, 12 assists in that one. Luis Scola, the ageless wonder, 20 points for him, especially some big shots down the stretch. But for Argentina, it was the other guys, the, the Luca Vendozas, the... Garinos, guys who just knocked down big shots in the biggest of moments. Well, Campazzo, just, uh, just a sensation, really. He averaged 14 points at the FIBA America Cup in 2017. In Rio, he was outstanding, averaging almost 16 points per game and six assists. And, of course, he had that incredible game and a double overtime win over Brazil. Uh, but this isn't just about Campazzo for Argentina. It's also about uh, Luis Scola playing in his fifth FIBA Basketball World Cup, that's right, dating back to 2002, and a whole host of other players. But really, both of these sides, both of these teams, are loaded with quality. And whichever team uh, ends up getting to the final, uh, you know, it's not going to be a surprise. Both of these teams are capable of going all the way. And we are about ready to tip things off uh, about six minutes away. But before we do that, uh, we're going to have the playing of the national anthems for both France and Argentina here in the Wukasong Arena in Beijing, China. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the national anthems. First, the national anthem of France. And now, the National Anthem of Argentina. <laughs>
Okay, the national anthems have been played. Sergio Hernandez on the right from Argentina shakes hands with Vincent Collet of France. Both of these coaches have uh, held the reins of their national teams for a very long time, uh, although uh, Coach Hernandez did take a, a two-year break, uh, one of which he served as an assistant coach to Julio Lamas. That was at the 2014 uh, FIBA Basketball World Cup in Spain. We'll get a look at the referees. Steven Anderson from the United States will be the crew chief in the middle. Ademir Zarapovic from Bosnia and Herzegovina on the left. So Anderson in the middle and uh, Jorge Vasquez from Puerto Rico on the right. And we'll also get a look at these talented starting fives and uh, these amazing graphics, which I know that you can't wait to come and look at. Well, this is a starting five who really showed something the other night against the USA. Frank Nilakina hit some big shots in the fourth quarter. Evan Fournier was just an offensive killer the entire night, scoring 22 points. Ahmed Mbai got things going on early. Nicholas Batum out there for his experience and versatility. And of course, the stifle tower, Rudy Gobert. Absolutely incredible. Coming in and averaging almost 13 points and 10 rebounds. But the other night against the USA, 21 points for the big man, 16 rebounds, three huge blocks. Uh, also played 34 minutes, which I think is probably the most important stat for France is he stayed on the court for as long as possible. And when he's inside that paint patrolling, he makes it very tough for any offense. Stifle Tower, you amaze me. You amaze me to no end. On the other end, Argentina, they're not happy with just getting to another semifinal. This is their third one of the century. Uh, Luis Scola has been around for all of it, all three of those, but it's been Facundo Campasso who's been the star of this World Cup. He starts alongside Nicholas Brasino. Uh, of course, the aforementioned Scola, Patricia Garino, a great shooter, and Marcos Delia, uh, the big man inside. But Campasso, I mean, he might only be 5'10", a meter 79, but he plays so much bigger. You see there almost 14 points to go. There's eight assists, over four rebounds a game. Also giving you a couple of steals for a team that is actually leading the World Cup in steals. They play a frenetic type of basketball, yet still under control. It's beautiful to watch, and this is going to be an exciting matchup without question. And, you know, fans, whether they're Argentinian or from outside, because so many liked those uh, Argentinian players. You see Vincent Collet, again, that longtime head coach of France. So many people wondering what would happen when the golden generation retires and you know Skola is the last member of that golden generation is still going strong actually but they have players like Campasso. Here's Sergio Hernandez just can't give the man enough credit really I mean he had his team prepared to pull off what might be regarded as the the shock of the tournament the, their victory in the quarterfinals over Serbia a, a team that a lot of people expected to win the title. Yes and also it's the way that they came out with a lot of belief. Uh, you know, he believes in his players. The organization, tactically, they were just, you know, full of player movement, ball movement defensively. They didn't really yet let Bogdanovic take over or Jokic control the game. They controlled the tempo the entire time. You know, Argentina's been here. It's their 14th World Cup. That's the third most of any country. You know, obviously they won the first ever World Cup. And now they're looking to get another one in 2019. So the last time in the semifinals, Argentina lost in a heartbreaking fashion to Spain. That was in 2006. Andres Nocioni's three-pointer at the buzzer stayed out. Otherwise, they would have advanced. Well, good evening, folks. If you are just joining us, this is the FIBA Basketball World Cup, the second semifinal here in the Wukasong Arena in Beijing, China. And it's between France and Argentina. The winner will advance to face Spain, who beat Australia in the double overtime thriller in the first semi. Evan Fournier, who was electric against the United States, gets inside and misses with his first attempt. And now Campazzo brings it up for Argentina. Hands it off to Dalia, who had the foul trouble the other night. And Garino, uh, one of the unsung heroes, really. Here's Scola. 
Plays professionally in China. And clearly uh, enjoys the ambiance in this country. He played very well. He's been very good at this World Cup. And so has this man, Nelly Kina. Pleasant, pleasant sight there for France. And again, Nilakina, who has some critics saying he can't shoot that well, proved a lot of those critics wrong the other night, hitting a big three from the right wing and a long two from the left wing, gets things going here for France. Dalia goes right at Gobert. Had a good move, but didn't uh, finish. Amat in by another of the unsung heroes here after a sensational season with Virtus Bologna. Here's Fournier. This is his second attempt. And now Scola out on the break. Takes a little bit of contact and goes and scores. Remarkable. So Scola taking it coast to coast, showing off the ball handling. But one thing about Fournier, I know he's missed his first couple shots, and you see Scola head down near the Kina. Takes the contact and swipes down. Boy, he really was fouled, wasn't he? Too there was strong. no doubt about it. And uh, Scola takes his free throws. Interesting. Uh, Chris Bosch has fouled into the house, the former USA international. There's a lot of people in the building here tonight. Manu Ginobili as well here watching Argentina. Flew in for tonight's game. Wouldn't be surprised if he tries to get a few minutes here. Talk to Hernandez at halftime. Here's Gobert, gets blocked by Dalia. Scola again pushing the break. And clearly part of the strategy. Give it to the big man and let him go. Wow, Luis Scola. Garino. Oh, and that was a trip by Dalia. Yeah, Fournier is going to be in attack mode almost every time he touches the ball. That's not, is that borderline unsportsmanlike? Look at this, sticks his leg out. just sat on the court and look and look at that Campasso France I'm not accusing them of uh, taking Argentina lightly but Argentina have certainly come out with the same fire they had against Serbia Nilikina from the left corner and Dalia with the rebound yeah, you can just sense the intensity from Argentina Remarkable story they've become. Campasso. I'm sure a lot of people expected Argentina to get some wins at this World Cup, but not to be on the cusp of the spot in the final. Messino <laughs> was quiet the other night, took a knock to the nose. Campazzo, that's good. Oh, he's just continuing what he's been doing all tournament, knocking down shots. He's a 44% three-point shooter. Can't give him space. Now Nili Kina, another attempt for him, and off the front of the iron. So Argentina once again with a dream start. And Scola continually goes to the basket. Goes up again and banks it in. This time, beats Amat Mbai. And Scola is uh, getting the fans excited, as is always the case when he's on the basketball court. There's been nobody like him, really. He's an absolute legend in the making. Well, I haven't seen Vincent Collet that energized in a huddle in a while. You see Scola, who is 
set his mark in this game. Seven quick points for the, the veteran. And, and really on this one, uh, somebody gave us a note saying he took him to Scola. Unbelievable. That is that's genius. <laughs> I.e. took him to school. Scola, seven points already, and we're not even four minutes into the game. Again, 39 years old, Luis Scola. He's been in the World Cup since 2002. And for, players like, Cup. for players like him, 39 is the new 29. You heard the French coach talk about guys not playing within the system. And uh, Nando De Colo has checked into the game for France. Come in to give Fournier a breather. Yeah, De Colo also has been electric. 17 points a game on 58% shooting. Not bad production off your bench. Look at this activity. And look at the play by Campasso. Savvy. He just he gets it and throws it off Billy Kina. It's all he does is make play after play after play. Andrew obviously is going to come into the game. Louis Labry also is in, number 25 for France. So some early changes trying to get on to the right. I mean, this is a this is a bad start for, for France for a number of reasons, but maybe chief among them is it just confirms for Argentina that they belong here. And that they can they can go and win this game. And Paso fell, got his own miss. And right now it's all about intensity. And this Argentina team has more of it, but Scola missing. Missing badly there. Albacy. Didn't even know if he was going to make this team. Become a hugely important player for France. Well, he was their floor general for all 12 World Cup qualifiers. As Laberry comes in with a big shot off the bench. A three for Laberry. Laberry only averaging cut one point per game. So he's tripled his points total already. Then an offensive foul. So France. Chance here to build a little bit of momentum. And foul called on Campasso. And I mean, just to think about how surprising that shot from Labri is, he's only played in three of the six games. So the trust from Colet to go to his bench early and see if it pays off. Garino. Out on Decolo and Decolo takes it in and is fouled by Garino. Decolo, we know what he can do offensively. Able to score on all three levels, gets to the basket, gets to the free throw line. They can also knock down the outside shot. Well, he was crucial against the United States. Made some big plays late. So just when we thought Argentina were about to grab the game by the scruff of the neck, France has scored five unanswered points. De Colo is 9 of 10 from the free throw line against the USA. Again, his aggression towards the basket. You see the nice pass from Picasso deflected. I think Batum got his hands on that. Oh, nice. Salia! Well, so much attention defensively on Scola. Obviously, stepped out of bounds. Lack of spatial awareness there by LBC. Unforced turnover. When we came in here tonight, talking about the play of Rudy Gobert, but really the only player that, in that low post that's made the headlines uh, has been Scola as well as uh, Dalia. Well, on the floor now, Luca Veldoza, who I know impressed you so much the other night. Impressed everybody. Campasso. Oh, what a play. What a play. Come on, Jeff. The fake pass with one hand finger roll? 
<laughs> you do not see that every day. And Vildotha reaches in and fouls Decolo. Yeah, I need a... Uh, can't wait to see a replay of that Campasso move. Here's Manu Ginobili, who uh, hears the applause as his likeness appears on the overhead. Of course, the MVP of 2004. He was outstanding in 2002 when they made it to the final and lost Yugoslavia in overtime. Outstanding in 2006. There's Decolo driving in. What a finish by Decolo! What a move! Well, it kind of a page out of Campasso's book with a fake pass. And another tough finish. Bildoza, little runner, misses everything. Was that a pass? Well, that's the Gobert shot. effect. And you see the big man, of course, Gobert, 7 1, 2 meters 15, by the basket. You gotta think twice about what you're gonna do. Nicholas Fautum goes out, and Evan Fournier comes back into the game. I mean, you, you simply cannot put enough superlatives. Uh, out there for Fournier, the way he has played in this competition, but especially against the United States. He was pretty much unstoppable. Here's Garino backing up, but called for the charge. That's two fouls on him in the first quarter. You see Decolo taking the contact right on the chest, timed it perfectly. And Gar Garino. Both, both Garino and Hernandez asking for a flop, but great defense by Decolo. Argentina now in the penalty. France just one foul so far. Lavarie's already hit one three. Make it two. And look at that for the X Factor of France. Who expected that? Well, that's the beauty of these games. Gives a chance for guys to step up. Lavarie accepting the challenge. Also guarding Scola. Scola. Backs up and scores and gets a trip to the line. Boy, it has been all Luis Scola for Argentina. Nine points already. Labari thinking the foul was committed before he got into the shooting motion. Well, he's saying that Scola initiated all the contact. He saw the left elbow swing through. Well, I guess perhaps reputation counts for something. I mean, it is a country of sporting icons, and Scola is right up there. Well, Sergio Hernandez in the press conference following the victory over Serbia talked about Scola's impact off the court, his willingness to talk to the younger players and take them under their wing. What was amazing was, because uh, we traveled back with them in France from Dongguan from the quarterfinals, and to see Scola, he's among them, but he's also kind of clearly the leader. And you can just see how they're in awe of him. It's very special. Well, when he performs like this, it's no wonder. And he said as long as two years ago that he believed Argentina could get to the semifinals of the FIBA Basketball World Cup. And he's going to catch a break here. And, and really, the good thing for these two teams, just like in the previous game, both of these teams have already qualified for the Olympics. So excellent has been their performance. They took direct spots uh, from their respective regions, from the Americas for Argentina and from Europe for France. Spain and Australia, who played in the first semifinal, will also be at the Olympics in Tokyo next year. Fournier looking to make his mark. Neck, who's checked in. Can't stop him. That's the Evan Fournier we saw against the United States. Yeah, the ball handling wizardry on display there, the shaking of the crossover. I like Great that. Space. Wizardry from the wizard. And Campasso's pass this time not caught by Deck. Well, if there's one thing you'd say about Campasso's game is, you know, he makes a lot of those risky passes. Sometimes they pay off and they're beautiful. You see the Fournier drive, a lot of contact, able to finish. But Campasso takes those gambles and they can pay off or they can lead to turnovers like that. It is crazy that Labrie 
who had four points in the total of the tournament coming into this one. Already eclipsing that with two three-pointers. And Matias Lasso comes in for Gobert. Nicolo and the ball goes off of Lasore. And he, then he steps out of bounds as he's trying to control it. So Lasore just comes into the game and turns it over. And just, just as uh, Serbia did, uh, you know, you look out there and you get the feeling that France have so much size that they're going to be just incredibly difficult to overcome. But Argentina just fight. La, La Provitola. Got it to Deck, but he missed the reverse layup. Shaky start for Deck. Now Deck goes in and a little underhanded shot is good. Teammate of uh, Campazzo's at Real Madrid. Yeah, Deck, another guy who had a strong game against Serbia. Double figures, had the breakaway dunk slash dagger, if you remember. And now a hold on Gaisi. So. Argentina over the limit, and that means uh, Lasor will go to the line. Matthias Lasor, 23 years of age. And actually, he was held first. There's a lot of uh, tugging and holding that goes on, and sometimes maybe it just matters uh, when, <laughs> when the referee sees it. The sword miss, misses the first one. He even had some good moments the other night against the American team. Oh, Takes wow. two, but gets it back and misses again. And the ball ends up in the corner and is picked up by Vildotha. La Provitola whips it over to Deck. And Deck goes in for the rim rocker. Well. Gabriel Deck got a ball screen and no help side defense from France. Takes off for the slam. Is it just me or does he look kind of lackadaisical out there? He is just so relaxed and Fournier answers. Makes it look easy. Yeah, able to weave through the defense again with the dribble. La Provitola. Risky business, dribbling in front of Albasi like that. Gaisi. Yeah, that and Zaropovic calls the foul. Provitola also made a number of beautiful passes the other night, including one between the legs of the defender to Scola, rolling to the basket. There you see the foul on Nicolo. Looks like he got a lot of ball there. Gaisi goes out. Scola comes back in. Pajero up in the game as well for Argentina, number 10 in the corner. Yeah, the reserves were so crucial the other night for Argentina. Now Scola battling. Obviously, look at him getting after Scola, helping out with the double team. And now Scola may have said something. Or no, he held. Yeah, fortunate to not get called for the unsportsmanlike, but still going to be two free throws. He was kind of on his way up. But if France goes down, sorry, if they end the quarter just down three, not the worst scenario for them considering how poorly they start shooting the ball. That's only the first foul on Scola. Fajero goes out, and Bersino comes back in for Argentina. If you remember against Serbia, Argentina committed 11 fouls in that first quarter. Serbia was living at the free throw line, and it did not affect them at all after that. Good start for Dicolo, who comes off the bench. And he comes out, and Axel Tupan comes in. French fans, always uh, loyal followers of this national team. They go everywhere. There's Vildosa. Final nine seconds. Will they be able to hold on to and get the last shot? La Provitola going up against Albasi. Vildosa has to launch it. And very good defense at the end by France. 
as uh, Argentina takes a 21 to 18 lead uh, to the benches at the end of the first quarter. Well, check out the shooting Argentina starting off hot, 9 to 16 overall. And knocking down a three-pointer. Also doing a great job on the glass. Ten rebounds already for Argentina, including three for Scola and three for Campaso. They do have a one more turnover than France. But again, considering the quick start, 10 to 2 in the first few minutes, check out some of the highlights where Luis Scola really got things going for the Argentinian squad. If you're France, you're just down three a one possession game and that's with Rudy Gobert being relatively quiet yet to score does have a couple of rebounds but you can tell Fournier after settling for a couple outside jump shots early made a point to get to the basket just realizing Argentina might not have anyone who can stop him in this game real dunk as Deck elevates and detonates. Well, Argentina coming out and throwing some blows. But France hanging around, getting some great play from Labari. Fournier, after he sat down, came back in, has done well. And Alpesi, since his introduction, has been his uh, usual solid player, uh, especially on defense. Here's the FIBA Basketball World Cup app. If you don't have it, I would be awfully surprised by now. But in case you don't, load it into your smartphone and enjoy the ride. It's got everything you need. From stats, interviews, photos, videos, you name it, it's got it. Second quarter underway, and Vildoso is still in the game with La Provitola, Scola, Deck, and Delia for Argentina. And it's Fournier guarding Deck and picking up the foul. Look at this. Well, they found the mismatch, isolated him on strong side of the floor and cleared the way. Uh, Provitola gets it to deck again. Right back to the same spot. Fournier battling. Oh, oh the help defense swat from Lesor. Great timing there by Lesor. Now Lesor hands it off. Decolo for three. Ooh, collision of bodies. And Provitola now has it. And Lesso picks up the foul. So these teams uh, playing 48 hours ago. You see again the rejection from Lesor. Why don't we call him Lesor? Eli and then Soar, S-O-A-R. How about that? That would be a good name for him. Mix a little bit of French and English. He gets up there. Here's Vildotha. Ooh. Goes right at Lesor that time. Didn't soar high enough. Well, that was a beautiful finish of Vildoza. Got it high up in the air, avoiding the block. Ticolo. Pass to Albisi. Fournier's open, beautiful pass behind the back. Wide open, good! Now the question is, did he tap it? I think he did. He Might wave this off. It might have gone in had he not tapped it. Oh, they're calling it a two-point basket, so. Yeah, actually it may not have gone in. But they are allowed to do that in FIBA, even though the ball's on the cylinder. Tap it in since he can tap it out defensively. Just cannot make contact with the rim with your body. Oh, Scola! It looks like falling he, down. Looks like he traveled. 
Yeah, France appealing for a travel. He did a jab step one way, then uses other foot to move. And it caught Lasov off guard, so he had no choice but to foul. You see here, Watch right. This. Oh, wow, that's not. He just, what happened was he stepped on Lasor's foot, his right foot, and went down. Well, he shuffled his feet initially. Open is La Provitola, and then Deck flies in, but good strong rebound from Fournier, Evan Fournier. Feels out the defense, turns, goes up. Oh, what a finish. This man is a scorer. There's no other way to put it. He just puts the ball in the basket. France have pulled to within one. Scola, a little jump hook. And now France can take the lead. Laverie's minutes, though. Very uh, beneficial surprise as he's a little soft with the ball there. Oh, strong screen from Lasso. Albacy. Ooh, nice pass. And the two hands. Flush from Lesor, France have taken the lead. And all of this with Gobert on the bench as well. It's the other guys for France making plays. That pass from Nicola though was... Wow. Yeah, Nicola has been terrific. So timeout by Sergio Hernandez. Let's go down and listen. No tienen que recibir acá, porque es donde viene el mano en mano. O donde viene el pick and roll. Baco, va por Luca. Bien, Luca. Hey, esta bola ya. Tu mejor ángulo para el tiro es así o ahí. Para un tiro en movimiento. Ok. Vos directamente te vas. Te metes con un diamante ahí, pero es en transición. Sí, Paco, ataca fuerte acá. Salís. Y te enganchás con Paco mano a mano para buscar el punto. Y lo tirás. Well, impressive finish by Lesor. And it was uh, after a wonderful pass by Nando De Colo. Who, despite coming off the bench, it's not really who starts, it's who finishes. And often he's in the game at the end. Campasso, meanwhile, back in the contest. And La Provitola misses from the top of the key. All the momentum in France's favor right now. And Batum checks back in after Lavery's impressive performance. Argentina led by as many as eight points in the first quarter. Batum to Albacy. Back to Batum for three. Albacy has a shot. That passes up on it. And Campasso reaches up, knocks it away. Fournier has to hurry. He's going to pull up for a jumper. No, he's going to explode in the lane, go off one foot. Well, it was a great attempt. He knew exactly how much time he had. Beautiful bounce pass to Leah. And was almost affected there by Batum, but nevertheless, he gets the ball back, goes up, and draws the foul. So a potential three-point play for Batum. So Vassar now picking up his third foul. And that'll bring Gobert back. But here it is, look. He was short there, but he stayed with it. And maybe a tough call on Lesor. But does not make the free throw. Remember, the free throws were, were made in abundance by Argentina against Serbia. Can't afford to give away points at the line. We've seen this a few times. Argentina, Argentina doing a great job with denial defense, but Fournier can't hit the long shot. Campazzo puts it up from deep and off the back of the iron. Now Gobert, see if he's uh, got a little more, more bounce in his step. 
after sitting for a few minutes. He gets it from Decolo, passes out to Batum. Two good looks for Batum. Hasn't been able to knock one down. La Provitula hits it right at about free throw line distance. Albasi gets in, puts it up with the left hand, is not there. Now Scola, Campasso, and hands it off to Deck, who goes in, tries to go strong, lays it up and in despite the defense from Batum. And just like that, Argentina moved back in front, 29 to 24. Well, Gabriel Deck has been a huge contributor off the bench. Six points already, and all three field goals have been impressive. France forced to call a timeout. There's Boris Dio, the longtime France star, even played into the European qualifiers uh, before announcing his retirement. This was Deck, who uh, again has become an important factor for Argentina. And here he is again after the no look. And he held on just long enough to uh, let Batum go past before releasing it. And really, uh, one of the more anonymous players, even though he plays for Real Madrid, certainly not in Argentina is he anonymous, but compared to the star power that we've seen, he has really held his own in this World Cup. Yeah, no question about that. His stock is going up. And that time, the defense by La Provitola forcing the turnover. And again, it's been the defensive pressure from these guards from Argentina all tournament long. It's caused nightmares for uh, their opponents. They forced so many turnovers. They had 11 steals of an average coming into this one. Nicola's going to come out. Amat Mbaye comes back in. So you bring in a power forward uh, for a combo guard. Also, Nili, oh no, sorry, Nilikina also in the game now. Yeah, Mbaye needs to be aggressive. And they're discussing with the referee. He's averaging seven points per game, but shooting 64% from the field and 60% from three. So you want to see him be aggressive as France picks up its fifth foul. Argentina yet to foul this quarter. Wow. So Argentina in the bonus the rest of the way here in the first half. Seems like one reason why. Cole called the timeout uh, was to kind of just try to keep the intensity up from France, the way he was kind of egging them on. Look at Scola's numbers. Very close to, a, on his way to a double-double, it would appear. Needs a few more rebounds. Yeah, I'm sure he'll get those. He's the premier rebounder. Now we see a 2-2-1 press for Argentina. And they back down into a man-to-man, -man, but Scola Double digits in 22 of his last 23 World Cup games. Just so consistent. Fournier hounded by Campasso. Shot clock winding down, and, and Fournier drives in. That was a good try. Scola now going to try his luck against him by Gobert with the board. Gobert has not made a huge impact on this game at all. And it says to pick. Nilikina hits another jump shot. 
Well, Gobert does make an impact there with the screening. It's tough for defenders to get around him. And obviously that's one way to relieve the ball pressure that the guards are setting. Scola again. And picks up the foul on Gobert. And Gobert, the Gobert factor is, well, you know, you say Scola outwitted him there. Oh, look at the underhand flip. Just so creative, so smart inside. And when he gets the ball in the block, you just know he feels right at home as you see Chris Bosch. What's Chris Bosch like? Man, I played in this thing. Chris Bosch getting hearing the love from the, the crowd in Beijing. Scola misses uh, the first. Think about how many great players have played in the FIBA Basketball World Cup over the years. You know, you see the likes of Bosch here. Played in that 2006 team of the USA that finished third and beat Argentina in third place game, in fact. Kajira up, comes back in. Scola goes out for a breather. Here's Kobe. He didn't play at the World Cup, but he played in two Olympic games and obviously a fan favorite. Always has been in China. But the love he got when he came for the Beijing games was off the charts. Yeah, he talked about being here since 1998 to spread the game of basketball. As Fournier finally dumps it off to Gobert. Nice Bear. idea. Finally, they've got to get Gobert going. That is... Uh, Clearly an advantage they should have. Kajera picks up that first foul. Well, Gobert the other night against the USA just could not be stopped. Drew 10 fouls, got to the free throw line 10 times, making nine of them. It's just the nature of sports, isn't it? You play one game at a certain level, and there's no guarantee that you're going to play that next game at that level. It's not to say that you can't turn it up a notch tonight, but it certainly has not been the same Rudy Gobert that we saw against the United States. There, that's much better. Well, he talked about the motivation he had going into that game after Miles Turner essentially called him out in some ways on Twitter. Deck took a shot. He's going to have to come out. Looks like he's rolled his ankle. I think he caught a knee in the thigh. Did he take a knee? Yeah. So Is he going to have to come out? France fortunate to not get called for a foul there. And you'll see it again. It well, it's just nearly yeah. There's just yeah, nothing untoward there. So Scola will indeed come in for deck. Had words for Nilikina. I don't think Nilikina did anything on purpose. Oh, bounce pass for Jayarup. Saved it. No, nope. he stepped out of bounds. Yeah, you see there, Napovitola telling him if you're going to cut back door, cut hard, I'm going to feed you. Three minutes to go in a thrilling first half. Argentina on top of France. Fournier. Shooters bounce, not quite. And Fajero knocked it away, but into the hands of Mbai. And La Provitola reaches in and commits the foul. That's the second team foul on Argentina. So, you might be 100% right. You might be 100% right. I just couldn't tell from where I was. So Fierro up, getting good minutes. Well, he's got a, I was going to say a nice body, but just a strong body for a 21-year-old, good athlete. Obviously, was the victim of a incredible block from Lucic in Serbia. Fournier keeps firing and can't knock one down yet from the outside. And Fierro up, brings it up the floor. Batum in the game now, and uh, Mbai goes out. Nicola getting ready to come back in as well. La Provitola thought he could shoot it over the trees, but he was short. 
Fournier has Campazzo on his back, and then he goes in and is fouled by Dalia. And again, one thing Kobe Bryant mentioned in the press conference about his friend's team and Evan Fournier is his moxie. He just plays fearless, always going downhill. You see, he feels a contact, and right away his first thought is get the ball up so I can get to the free throw line and find my rhythm. He's 3 of 12 already from the field, so no lack of aggression from Fournier in the semifinal. Brusino comes in for Fierro. Brusino spent some time in the NBA with the Dallas Mavericks. Uh, didn't really submit his role there, so he's back in Europe, back in, in Spain. But it, it does kind of speak to the quality of this Argentina team. They've got really good players, some of whom you might not have heard of. You know about Fournier, though. And his second free throw somehow stays out. Nine rebounds already for Scola. La Provitola. Tough pass to Brusino. He's known for his stroke. Here's Campasso. And the tap is there for Brusino. Gobert hands it off to Fournier. Goes off one leg. Oh, what a tough shot. Oh, he's a tough shot maker. And Fournier refuses to go down without uh, emptying out the clip, essentially. Aprovitola, his pass, and Dalia couldn't quite control it. Gobert takes it away. Look at him dribble. And then he hands it off. And La Provitola commits Argentina's fourth foul of the quarter. So any more, they'll be over the limit. Oh, smart foul. You see a little crossover dribble there from Rudy. And <laughs> almost looks like Leprovitola dove on him. Piccolo's going to come in for Fournier as we uh, get ready for the final 107 here in the first half. Nilekina able to inbound it just in time. Nilekina goes behind his back, puts it up. Oh, that was sweet. Hey, this kid can play. That's why the New York Knicks drafted him so early in the first round. Still only 21 years of age, meter 98, 6'6", six, six, guard with a lot of skill. La Provitala! Beautiful wraparound pass to Dalia. And that's what you need to do against Gobert. You draw him to you as a guard and then dump it off to the big man, diving to the basket. Look at the Argentina fans behind the Argentina bench, standing and singing the whole game. Batum from the right corner goes down. Now Scola able to save it before it goes out of bounds. La Provitola hands it off to Campazzo and wisely holds it for the last shot. Campazzo launches it! I thought he was fouled. But it just hits a Tiso buzzer beater. This kid knows no... Doesn't know how to fail, really. He is utterly sensational. That shot takes Argentina's lead to 39-32 at halftime over France. Well, you see the shooting. France missing four free throws. Only knocking down two of their 13 three-point attempts. Overall, just 39% from the field. They're down seven. Argentina doing a lot of damage in the paint. Also getting easy opportunities and fast breaks. And thank God for France's, France's bench with Decolo and Labiri stepping up and contributing. Or else this would be a wider deficit. Scola, though, 13 points already. 10 rebounds, double-double in the first half of the semifinal. That is unbelievable. I got some bad news for the fans sitting behind those Argentinian fans. They're going to be standing the whole game. <laughs> so they may as well stand themselves. Here is uh, a look at the highlights of a great first half by Argentina. But France, we know, can uh, put up points in a hurry. 
It's Argentina on top, 39-32 at halftime. We'll be right back. Well, if you take a look at some of the highlights of that first half, including that beautiful pass from Decolo to Lasso, one of the plays of the first 20 minutes. Again, a chance to get to the championship game on the line here for both of these teams. And Argentina has come ready to play, no question. Again, the other day against the USA, the keys to the game was for France to have three bona fide scores. We knew Fournier and Decola would produce, and it was Gobert who was that third scorer. Tonight, it looks like Frankie Nilakina is willing to step up into that role. So, really, Argentina is showing us, again, their acumen. They're not only their technical now, uh, but their intelligence on the basketball court. I mean, they're making plays that are thinking man's plays. Yeah, well, there were only, there were 32 teams in this World Cup, the most ever, and at the moment, there are only two undefeated ones left, and that's Spain, and of course, this Argentina team. So, there's a reason they have yet to lose. They have so much self-belief. You talk about their IQ, and that's something that Coach Sergio Hernandez alluded to in the press conference. The fact that they, they're not as athletic as most teams. They're not as big as most teams. I mean, the average height, just 6'5", a meter 96. So they have to basically outthink most teams. And uh, a huge part of the game, and, and really, uh, to be fair with uh, Fournier, I mean, they, they've targeted him and tried to neutralize him, and they've made life difficult for him, but yet he has still come, still come out and, and had a decent game. But what do you do if you're France uh, at halftime? Well, I'm sure Evan Fournier in the locker room is telling his guys, listen, I'm not going to miss nine shots in the second half. I'm going to make more shots that I'm going to miss. Um, you know, he's been the one guy who hasn't really been able to get going. Nicholas Batum, 0 of 3 from beyond the arc. You know, he's had some good looks. Um, and, of course, Gobert has yet to make a field goal, just one point so far. does have six rebounds. So, again, considering France, how well they played the other night, and how slow they kind of got going in this game. Only being down seven is not the worst thing, especially with Scola playing the way he is. Well, Argentina back in the semifinals for the first time since 2006 when they lost the heartbreaker, the one-point defeat to Spain. Spain then went on to beat Greece in the final. France... Uh, making making it uh, all the way to the semifinals five years ago uh, before falling and uh, losing to Serbia, who went on to the final and uh, lost to the United States. Of course, they France did salvage that tournament uh, with a victory over Lithuania to clinch third place. And, of course, uh, Nick Batum uh, making the All-Star Five uh, just sensational in that tournament. And Louis Laberry has been the surprise sensation in this first half. I mean, only six points, but they were in key moments when France just had nothing going. And it's almost as if Argentina didn't really know he was on the scouting report, uh, leaving him open. Came in, only had four points in the entire World Cup. Six here in this first half. And you see his shooting stroke. It's a beautiful form. He's also got the height and length. Laberry standing six foot ten. But Rudy Gobert, 0 for 1, he's taken one shot. He does have six rebounds. He has no block shots. Really, uh, by his lofty standards, hasn't made any sort of impact on this game in the first half. So uh, a lot of work here to do for, for France to kind of get everybody going. You know, you got it was interesting as well that France, they got to play 
Got the outstanding play from the guys coming off the bench to get him back into the game after they trailed by as many as eight. France came back to take the lead. Uh, 20, and then they, they were leading uh, brief, only briefly. And then a sec, kind of a second assault happened from Argentina. And they've raced back into a, a seven-point lead at halftime. So, at, you know, at one point we were thinking uh, maybe we'll get an all-European final between France and Spain. And now we might have uh, an all-Spanish-speaking final between uh, Spain and Argentina. Obviously, 20 long minutes to go. Yeah, well, France has a few reasons to be nervous. They've uh, only won two of their previous 15 World Cup games where they were down at the half. But one of those games was against Serbia in 2014 when they were able to kind of get into position for a medal. So, you know, when you have the, the medals on the line and the podium on the line, you know, you, you can kind of overcome that initial halftime adversity. So Vincent Collet and Sergio Hernandez uh, matching wits here in the Wukasong and uh, trying to get their team to the finish line. Uh, the prize will be a, a game against Spain in the final. Spain winning their game in double overtime against, Arge against uh, Australia. So Australia will take on the loser of this game in the battle for third place. So we'll be right back.
Well, both teams have made their way back to the court for the second half warm-ups. We're just about three minutes away from the third quarter starting off. And we'll see if the coaches have made some halftime adjustments. A couple of things of note. Three fouls on Matias Vassell, the only French player in foul trouble. Meanwhile, Argentina have three players with two fouls in Guerino, Delia, and La Provitola. So, no doubt, a lot more twists and turns to come in this game uh, between France and Argentina. And uh, again, it's worth mentioning the play of that man, Luis Scola, who has just continued to defy logic uh, with the level of his performances. At his age, he's got the double double already 13 points, 10 rebounds. He came out, set the tone, especially with those coast to coast uh, breaks and points. And. Uh, it really is incredible. I mean, what 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 an inspiration he is for Argentina, and uh, well, how far can they go? I mean, think about Manu Ginobili here on the sidelines, watching his former teammate play. You know, Ginobili only 41, saying, "I need to be eating what Skull has been eating." Well, this is it. I mean, people were talking about how his Skull have been able to do this. He really does look after himself, and he's knock on wood avoided. Uh, the serious injury that seems to befall most athletes or many, many basketball players, yourself included. Of course. But uh, Scola, I mean, it's his third semifinal to think about the 13 years that have passed since the last one in 06. Obviously had one in 02. And a little known fact, only two players have played in three semifinals in the World Cup. Do you know who they are? Sorry, only three... Well, he's the third. Oh, sorry. To play in, in how many semifinals? Three semifinals. It's a tough one. Uh, one guy from Yugoslavia. Okay. I'm not sure. Tell me. Vladi Divac. Oh, Vladi Divac. Of okay. He's now the general manager of the Kings. And then, of course, our guy from the Soviet Union. Oh, Valery Tikhonenko. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. His so, daughter is also a player. Look, here we go. Uh, just doing this comparison, I guess, of kind of the star star bigs in the game. Labrie coming off the bench and giving a surprise eight points, three of three from the floor, two rebounds. Uh, but Scola, 13 points, four of eight field goals, and the 10 rebounds. And he had that Superman pose for a reason because he is Superman. I mean, he just, what is the kryptonite for that man? That's what I want to know. Well, you saw that augmented reality graphic there as well. Uh, introducing that for the first time here at the FIBA World Cup. And also, we'll, if we go to the reviews and instant replays, you might get to hear the referees have some chit-chat with each other or the coaches and players. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. We haven't heard that yet. Hopefully, we'll get it. And those crazy Argentina fans are living and breathing every moment. Vincent Collet and Pascal Donadieu, uh two of the great coaches in the French uh, National League. Well, the first adjustment here, Albisi starting the second half over Nilipina. Also, Laberry starts. Vildosa, meanwhile, starts for Argentina and Garino back in the game as well. So, we thought Gobert had to get balled. Here he is twice, getting his hands on the ball, but and uh, his coach telling him to go up and just dunk it. Dunk it, Rudy. If anybody can do it, you can. So that means Batum also will come off the bench in the second half of France. An offensive foul called on Louis Labarie. I'm oh, sorry, Batum is in the starting five. It's Mbai. Ooh, that was... I mean... <laughs> those who just kind of ran full speed into the screen and fell. Getting after Garino. Here's Vildosa. The Campasso in the right corner, and Fournier reaches in and commits the foul. Three free throws. Two fouls on Fournier, and he definitely got him on the left wrist.
first one is good. France led for most of the night against the United States the other night. And Argentina did the same against Serbia. So the Vildoza is 24 years of age. So, you know, he's got a chance to be a part of this national team for a long time. As does Garino. Well, it is a young team, obviously, outside of Scola. Everyone else under 30. So the future is bright in Argentina. So they gave him the three free throws. And they take advantage. It's a 10-point lead. France uh, need to change the rhythm of the game. To get it to Gobert. Albacy open off the front of the iron. Batum gets it back to Albacy. He's going to try again. He gets it right back. That's confidence right there. Albisi, after missing one, steps right back up and knocks down another one. As Campasso. Campasso has to be careful. Raising his his uh, arms, his elbows. Here's Scola now going up against Labari. Spins, turns, puts up a very difficult shot. And then not able to get the rebound. Good defense. Forcing the tough shot. How big was that obviously three-pointer? Yeah, they needed it. They were down 10. First time facing a double-digit deficit. Labari. Oh, way off. Now, Vildoza. Behind the back pass to Scola. And he goes up. Oh, no, and they're going to call a charge. Yep, use his off arm to clear out Laberi. Still a phenomenal finish. But good it call by indeed. the referee. And Zaropovic right on the call. Terrific pass. Well, just kind of leaned into him a little bit. That left hand. Interesting by having Albisi on the court. It's almost kind of like the mirror opposite of Campazzo. And maybe that's what Cole thinks is a better match, matchup for Campazzo to kind of neutralize his impact on both ends of the floor. Here's Fournier. Because he's also quick. Fournier just grazes the outside of the net. Oh, that's two consecutive three-pointers that don't Touch the rim for France. Yeah, you mentioned the low center of gravity that Campasso and LBC share. Dildosa for three. That's good. Too much room for a shooter like him. I mean, is it too much to call this the Argentina miracle? Because that's kind of what it feels like. I'm just not sure that anybody saw this coming. Fournier. Puts his head down, passes out to Batum for three. That's good. Huge France is trying to they hang needed. tough. Yeah, they needed that. His first make of the night. This match could help from Gobert. Well, he says, I'm going to have to shoot it, and he makes it. The legend lives on, Luis Scola. Pointing with a pump fake, and they hand it off to Gobert, but he misses the dunk. This triggers the right to Mildoza. He goes behind his back, and then he holds up. And a foul called on Batum, who had hustled back to play defense. And it looked like Vildoza's main aim there was to get the contact rather than to make the shot. But that missed dunk says it all for Gobert tonight. It's just not happening. And that's a kind of a tough call on Batum because he did everything he could to slow up. But a clever player, nevertheless, by Vildoza. Well, these fans are providing a lot of energy for their players. Yeah, man, Scola, he's gonna get a quick rest. Obviously became the second all-time leading scorer in the World Cup in this tournament. But what he's been doing in the knockout stages has been most impressive to me.
Cordoza makes both free throws. 12 point lead now for Argentina against their defense, suffocating France. Piccolo gets in the lane, he's tied up. And talking about another uh, revelation of sorts, you'd have to say Vildoza, the way he played against Serbia, and now the way he's playing here tonight, especially in the second half. Well, second leading scorer tonight, thanks to five free throws and a three. Vildoza. Spin by Garino. Deck gets in for the rebound. Or no, Gaisi. And then Gaisi earns the trip to the line. And Bonson Collet is going to call timeout and he's going to go to Poire. Uh, but before he comes into the game, he's going to talk to his troops. Well, Gaisi does the right thing. We'll go bear around. Just pump fake, get him off his feet, and draw the foul. Gobert was asking for a three-point, uh, three-second violation, but let's go down to the bench. Well, it seems like Collet just has more energy than his players right now in these huddles. And he's, and, you know, he's act, asking them to be engaged, to, to be active, to move the ball, and of course to not allow for these offensive rebounds. It is almost kind of a, a similar a feeling that we got from Serbia the other night. I mean, it, it, you know, Argentina are playing at such a fast, determined pace, and Serbia just could not keep it, sustain their level, and uh, you'd have to say the same tonight for France. Intensity is everything in basketball, Jeff, honestly. And you can tell right away, Argentina had it from the opening tip. Gave them a quick start. France did climb back, but Argentina just looks like the better team so far here tonight. Caisi makes the first and the second. And Scola, while he's catching his breath, getting a the rest, the lead grows. Albisi. I think Albisi should look for his shot. Uh, and the ball goes out of bounds. Again, they're making all these, I want to say the 50-50 plays, but just making everything so hard for France just to even execute their offense. Campasso steps back, gets it back, pump fake, gets it back to Vildosa. Got a mismatch. And this is everything. Well, better defense there from France. Yep, Poirier did not take the bait. Poirier didn't play the other night against the USA. But he will know, uh, obviously, these uh, players, Campazzo and Deck, because he played at Basconia in Bilbao, near Bilbao. Victoria, Spain. Here's Lasor. Nice drop step. Good effort by Poirier. Now, shot clock at three. Lasor, oh, and bailed out by the Gaisi foul. And Sergio Hernandez saying, there was one second on the shot clock. Why did you commit the foul? We thrive on being smart, and that was not smart. Call for the hand check. 
So France managing just six points so far in the first five minutes of the third quarter. Albasi. Well, expect for to go to Nilakina very soon. So those are pulls up. You air balls in the second half now. So Nilly Keena comes back in for Albasi. I would have said after Albasi made the three pointer, I would have gone right back to him. And uh, France it took like three possessions and then. Here's uh, Nilly Keena. Passo so all over him. Uh, good anticipation from Garino. They're unable to even initiate their offense because of the ball pressure. That brings Fournier back in for Batum. Fournier, shifty move, drives in. Boy, what a quality finish. I mean, he just stood off the, off the bench five seconds in and gets a layup. Well, he feels the sense of desperation. Yeah, Fournier's done a great job attacking the basket, just 0 of 5 from three point range. Deck open. That's good. Wide open. They're just playing with so much confidence, Argentina. Again, the ball knocked away from Nilikina, but Garino, Garino called for the foul. And that's what that great start does. Just like against Serbia, they have the great start against France. The confidence level goes up. The intensity level goes up. That's a, a look again at the foul. A little this pocket pass there. Can pass out a deck. And deck has a lot of versatility in his game. You see them take off for some strong finishes. Now there he is knocking down a three. You know which Argentina player he reminds me of a little bit in the past? It's Delfino. Just kind of ambles around, doesn't look like he's in a rush, but gets the job done. Ooh. And unsportsmanlike foul called on Vildoza. Two shots and possession. So now maybe is a chance for France. Yeah. They pulled him down. Yeah, he does have that kind of, uh, like you said, Delfino, Andres Nocioni feel to his game. Where you're just not quite sure what's his strength, and yet you look in the box score, and he's in double figures and five or six rebounds, a couple steals. So here's the chance for Decolo and Lebleu to shave as many as five points off the deficit if he can make this, and then they can hit a three. The lead had ballooned to 15 for Argentina. France 4 of 19 from three-point range. Labarie 2 of 3. It's been a, a struggle for everybody else. Fournier. Throws Shot it back. Clock. Ticolo has to launch it. And now Lasor bats the ball out to Vildoza, who gets it back to Campasso. And again, that Argentina defense, you have to salute it. Scola back in. Oh, there and it is does again. a great job of knowing the arm's going to be there. Gets the foul as he goes up. How do you do as a player, you know, you're down 13. 13 minutes to go. You're kind of like stunned a little bit. How do you shake yourself out of this and not let the negativity just kind of swallow you up? Well, again, basketball is a game of runs. You have to expect a French run to come. And it starts with the defense. You know, they need to put together a string of stops, maybe two or three, obviously a rebound to get the official stop. 
And unfortunately, that unsportsmanlike foul didn't lead to a, uh, a multi-point position, position, I should say, possession. And it's right back to 15. But it's all credit to this Argentina defense. There you see it again. Nothing coming easy for France. Meanwhile, on the other end, Scola is able to catch the ball in the post with no resistance, really. Nilekina, they had settled for the three, and he makes it. Well, he provides evidence of what he can do once again, his bright future, but it was nevertheless the only shot they were going to get. But you see how easy it is for Argentina to find room and to get into the lane to get open shots, and then that's what Look at Campasso for three. Campasso with the golazo. Another still, near still. Pare keeping it alive to Colo, fouled by Vildoza. Fournier now 5 of 16 from the field. Just can't get a consistent rhythm going. That last three pointer for Campazzo, his third. Here's a replay. This is the pass to Campazzo again. He's now 3 of 7 from three point range. Argentina shooting 43% from three-point range. A rare sight there, Decolo missing a free throw. And even the, the look on the French fans kind of says it all, really. It's just not happening. The thing is, they've got enough experience out there. Got to shake themselves out of this. 12 minutes remaining. La Provitola in the game. And Batum almost. Look at the joy that Campasso plays with, too. Just makes the game so much fun for himself, his teammates. Well, especially when he's up 14 points. Here's Scola going in the run, and what a block from Batum! That's a foul. Wow. Fournier kind of lowered his shoulder. That's four on Fournier. He's got to be a huge decision now for Vincent Collet. He'll have a timeout to think about it. Deck moving his feet. And you see the extension of the left forearm. Do you think that's a call that he gets away with at the club level? Look at this swat by Batum. Batum's length has always been one of his strengths. Well, there's the, the face of uh, Gobert. You saw one point and six rebounds for Rudy Gobert. And even if you look at the likes of Dalia, who hasn't played much here in the second half, he's got six points and three rebounds. So, you know, if you're not getting uh, much production from your, from your, your NBA star, it doesn't bode well. La Provitola able to get it back to Scola, who steps into it. And the long rebound goes out to La Provitola. Right about Poire. He's going to be with Boston, right? Poire. 
now. Campasso misses, wow. but follows up his own shot. He knew it was off, didn't he? Well, the hustle plays. Right when he released it, he knew it was off. <laughs> he ran to get the rebound. Scola. Tough shot. France stay with it. And Poiret is down. Yeah, took a shot to the face. Seems to be okay. He's had his bell rung. You see it right oh. there. Left elbow. Stola. Yeah, he got it. That reintroduces uh, Gobert. Well, France talked about, you know, they couldn't afford a letdown game after the high of beating Team USA in the quarterfinal. And watching this so far, you just can't help but see that's what the case has been. And another near steal from Campasso, yeah. Gaisi couldn't quite pick it up. Bye has been scoreless. Nilikina, tough drive. Boy, I mean, he's probably been their best player tonight. 11 points, 5 of 7 from the field. Compared to the 11 points and 5 of 16 from Fournier. Piccolo trying to slow down La Provitola. Deck from deep. Gobert with the board, gets Good it outlet. to Nilikina. Shot clock winding, or game clock winding down. Last three seconds of the third quarter. And Batum can't make it. So at the end of a frustrating 10 minutes for France, Le Bleu, they trail 60 to 48 against Argentina. One quarter remain, remains in this game. The winner to face Spain in the final. Well, France came into this game leading the tournament in shooting 52% from the field, also leading it in threes 45%. Just haven't been able to get that. And you see also the free throw numbers an advantage for Argentina. France 38%. I mean, they're just missing shots. There's no other way to put it. Argentina's making it very hard for them to make those shots. You know, they've missed more threes today than they've missed in any other game in the World Cup. They got a couple to fall in that quarter, but Again, just 5 of 22 from beyond the arc. It's uh, tough to win games when you miss that many shots. I think they've made life really difficult for France on the offensive end. There's no question about it, especially in the second half. I think yeah. in the first half, France probably had more opportunities to score. And the execution, the finishing just has not been there. So, you know, the sense of urgency maybe wasn't there at the start for France, but it has to be there for the next 10 minutes or they don't have a chance. I mean, they have to come out all guns blazing here. And Argentina just making it so, so difficult. Yeah, I mean, it's just been kind of Argentina's run, it feels like. Every game they've been in control of. And they might not have the big-name talent like the other teams. But that doesn't matter when you get on the floor and play with this level of intensity and self-belief. Can they pull it out? Ten more minutes to go, up 12. You don't expect them to take their foot off the gas. Again, Gobert, 0 of 2, 1 point, 7 rebounds, no blocks. Nilikina. Hands it off to Batum, De Colo now. A little bit more of a sense of purpose for France in that offense. And you can see Colet trying to get them fired up. You're right about the purpose. Cutting hard off that play. Coming off the screen hard. Forcing the issue.
And the Kina pulls up deep. And by with the rebound. Here is again, Nilikina. And by for three. That's good. You That's, talked about it. I mean, again, he's a BCL champion for a reason. He's had a great year of basketball, a late bloomer in this program. He needs to be aggressive. The near steal here could travel. No call. Campazzo. And he was held by Nilikina. Again, Campasso just so hard to stay in front of. Two minutes from Gaisi. As he goes out and Delia comes back in, probably offers a little more on offense. Right, but if he's there, if he's there, you can't run into him, okay? Ball inbounded to La Provitola. He goes baseline, gets it over to Campasso. La Provitola hits a three. Well, that is a early dagger in the fourth quarter, right after the end by three. That's a huge shot. He almost stepped out of bounds. And again, Campasso, look at the ball pressure. So he reaches in. But the fact that that's just his second foul. Played 26 minutes already. Fierro is going to come into the game, number 10. And he's going to give uh, La Provitola a chance to head back to the bench. Interesting, uh, La yeah. Provitola just hit that three. Nilikina, long two. That's good. Wow. He's done it two games in a row, folks. He's been the man. Hold on Batum. Shot won't count there. Campasso just threw it up after the whistle. A little hook shot. Him, trying to fight through the screen. Campasso open, short. That might give a chance to run for France. Nope. Argentina did have everybody back. Nilikina hands it off to Gobert. And Gobert, first sign of the game. That he's into it now, running the floor and dunking it with two hands. Yep, first field goal. La Provitola leaves his feet, passes back out to Campasso. And yeah, that's short. short. And into the hands of Gobert. And good hands by Campasso. Uh, this is a big moment here. If France can get a bucket. You see the beautiful feed. Milikina, Gobert, no one dares get in the way. And by two Batum from the right. They needed that one. La Provitola. And again, France would like to get something in transition. They haven't had anything. Breaking. Here's Milikina. His pass. Knocked away, and it leads to a two-on-one break. La Provitola behind the back pass, finished by Scola. Oh, guess who it was once again defensively? Campasso forcing the turnover. And then a beautifully executed fast break. 20 points and 11 rebounds now for Luis Scola. That's back-to-back 20-point -back games. Great pass inside. He mentioned Scola. I mean, hard for him not to get some MVP votes if Argentina win it all at this point, right? Watch again, running the floor. Lays it up and in.
Again, he's had the same game pretty much for the last 17, 18 years. Nothing much has changed. It's just no one can figure out how to stop it. Probably offensively, he's gotten better the older he's become. Craftier. I would suggest. Craftier, yeah. Here's Mbai. Gobert with the rebound. And he'll have to settle for a couple of free throws after attempting the putback. France still in this. Only down 10, but four fouls on Delia. If I'm in by, I'm shooting that basketball. He's definitely got the stroke. See that Albisi is back in, and now Gobert misses a free throw. Gobert one of three at the line tonight. Ooh. But Mbai sneaks in there. Great job on the boards. Nascola questioning the rest, arguing he was pulled over. Well, they're in the penalty. They need to take advantage. No. I have to say, I don't agree with Scola there. Well, the, the other night, France 21 to 25 from the foul line, just 9 of 16 here tonight. Three in a row. Three consecutive misses for France. Does that look familiar? I mean, the other night, it was Marcus Smart and Kemba Walker missing four straight free throws. Against, uh, against France. And by makes one of two. Gets it back to single digits, the deficit. How much time can Cole leave Fournier on the bench with those four fouls? Good denial from RBC. Gola comes out. Now they're finally forcing Argentina to run their offense a little further out. Aprovitola zigzags his way, gets it to Dalia. Good job knocking it off the rim. Nicolo backs up. La Provitola gets it back out to Albasi. And it was long. Aprovitola. Argentina have gone cold. France haven't capitalized, really. And the French defense has picked up in the fourth quarter, limiting Argentina just five points, but like you said, can't quite capitalize on these opportunities as for the first time we're going to see Albisi and Nilekina in the game at the same time. Yeah, Decolo needs a blow, needs a breather. Nicolo so far, nine points on one of three from the field, is seven of eight from the free throw line. And the back pass from Vildoza to Scola. Now Garino drives in, and great work from Gobert to protect the rim. Hard falls as well. And the block called on Vildoza. They are over the limit, so again, France go to the free throw line. And that's four fouls now on Luca Vildoza. Take a look at this challenge. Could have been called a foul. The leg of Gobert taking out Garino. But also Garino was leading with his left, left forearm. I don't think Vildoza feels he's committed any fouls tonight. Nilekina, I'm going to wait to share his percentage to after he shoots the first one. You very quietly jinxed him. Well, he hadn't you, missed you, one. Until you inferred it. He hadn't missed one into that shot. But you All inferred that he long. hadn't missed the free throw, and it was transmitted to the poor Nilekina. Commentator's curse. Strikes again. He makes the second. The vital free throws here. If they'd made those four free throws, it would be a four-point game right now. Campasso. 
feel like the door opening slightly here for France. Deck open, this is everything. Falls to Garino, over to Scola, and suddenly wow. Argentina struggling. La Provitola has it. France just can't get their hands on the ball till now then. They, now they do, and it's nearly Kina. Good pass over to Mbai from Gobert into the corner. And he gets it back out. Argentina hustling Gobert back on the posting defense. up hard. Watch out for the three seconds. Fortunate to not get called there. Nilikina from deep. Oh. And what a tip in by Batum. They're going to wipe it away. Well, it, it did seem like he went over the back there. And uh, Olay saying he just can leap high and reach over. Watch this. Scola. I mean, there's enough contact to send Scola down. Yeah. I'm tempted to let that one go. So huge call. Would have cut it to six. Stays at eight. And, of course, this lineup for France, much more of a defensive lineup. You think about the two guards. And Nilekina and Albisi, obviously Batum, his length, Gobert inside. We saw a similar play, I think, in the Spain game before Australia. It was in the first half when Gasol, I think, leaned over and kept it alive. And the foul was not called. Could be wrong. I think that's what it was. La Provitola being hounded by Nilekina. Both teams in the penalty. And Albisi... His first foul. You see there the two battling for position. Now BC getting his arms around Campasso. Well, you have to say a couple of tough fouls going against France in the last 10 seconds. Right, but both ways now for shooting. Ruff's got to call him like they see him. 65-57, under five minutes to go. It's clutch time. Beautiful behind the back pass there from La Provitola. Scola has been a little bit more quiet here in the second half. Still 20 points, 13 rebounds. Well, I guess psychologically it gets even harder for France when you consider now there's less than five minutes remaining. They trailed by seven at halftime. They trail by nine points now. It'll be ten if Campasso makes the second and he doesn't. Every little bit counts. I'll be seen. And by We've got good looks here in the fourth quarter. And Dak goes in, lays it up. Fournier going to check back in on the next dead ball. Zach might be Argentina's best athlete. See the way he ran the floor on that one. Gobert twists and turns. Double teamed. Pass to deck, as you said, displaying the athleticism. It really is a Car Carlos Delfino like athleticism. 
So 2.3 remain on the shot clock. Fournier back in after a long stint on the bench with those four fouls. In by step back. And he stepped out of bounds. Amazing how many times that happens. So Mbai is going to come out. His left heel was just out of bounds. Campasso gets it back to Scola. Doesn't mess around. And he puts it up. And he raises both up in the air to signify the three-pointer. Well, the pick and pop. Another beautiful pass from Campasso. And Louis Scola. Milikina sees an opening, goes right to the basket. Well, he's been an absolute star tonight for France. They can have no complaints with his performance. He's probably been the only player who's played well. Yeah. I think the Knicks have uh, potentially a really special Same player. Same play. Sam back. Luis Scola thrusting himself into the MVP conversation. Wow. 26 points, 13 rebounds for the great Luis Scola. Nilikina, meanwhile, and now the clock is the enemy. The lead has grown to 15 points. And Le Bleu looked like they could be singing the blues after this. Here's Deck. Follows up his miss. You just know Scola wants it again. And with France, it is just so hard to understand. So many tournaments. They get a great result and is followed by a performance that just doesn't match their potential. And now fouling uh, Fournier, who attempted the three with Scola. So three free throws coming for Fournier. France will now have to play perfect basketball the rest of the way just to have a chance to force overtime. You see there, again, picking and popping. Scola, consecutive threes on back-to-back -back possessions. Fournier just adds insult to injury by missing the first of the three free throws. And now the second. So it's not their night, Jeff. No, it's not. Bear was so good against the USA, as was Fournier, as was DeColo. And tonight, really, it's uh, the main man has been Nilikina. Nilikina was tough the other night as well. And Argentina just seemed to be able to do what they want to do every time down the floor. And the fans. Haven't stopped chanting the entire game. Let's see what it means. It's kind of hard to call them surprise package since they have the likes of Scola and Campasso in the team. But again, it's just uh, nobody was talking about Argentina challenging for this title coming into this tournament. Yeah, obviously you had the USA, Serbia, Australia, Lithuania, France, France. Spain. Here we are, like you said, an all Spanish speaking final. Soon approaching. And that means we'll probably have a rematch. France, Australia, one of the classics of the second round. Escola. Here's an ovation from even, I think, the French fans. I think it's an offensive defensive substitution. La Provitola reaches in and knocks it away. 
Well, Sergio Hernandez didn't even ask Scola to go back in, but sometimes when you uh, reach that status, you do what you want. As you see Ginobili next to Kobe. And yeah, Cole is going to throw in the towel. Paul Lacombe, who was uh, vital for the team in the qualifiers and uh, earned a spot in on the roster, but hasn't been able to get his uh, playing time, especially with Fournier being so good, comes into the game. Fournier for three. So that gets it back to a 13-point deficit. Back home, very good defensively. I think maybe he should have come in a little bit earlier, but who am I? I'm not the coach. And the pass and the dump. And the basket, you know, I think if anybody uh, wants a road map, to success in international play, they should look back and see what Argentina have done the past few years. See how they've gotten to this point. Look at what they've done in the build-up to this tournament. Look at how they've approached each and every game. And probably, when you consider their coach, uh, Sergio Hernandez, doesn't get enough credit for being as as excellent as he is. Wow, three consecutive deflections from Garino. And again, they're Two not going to stop applying the pressure. That's what they do. And 48. Hugs on the bench for Deck. And the pass to Nicolo. And Campasso. Hands it off. Oh. Oh. He goes up. Ball slips out of his hand. But went for the highlight. He's going to hear about that from his teammates. Well, there's no such thing as garbage time. So Argentina, how much more magic do they have left? Going up against Spain as Fournier missing another free throw. Two of six. You know, you think of Hernandez, though. Why is he not being given a, a big job in Spain, for example, for everything that he's achieved over the years? That boggles the mind. Somebody is uh, not recognizing an opportunity there. Here is, and that's, I'm talking about mini clubs. Here is the drive and another basket for La Provitola. And in the end, they've made it easy. They have really made it look easy. Lacombe off to Decolo. And that's goaltending. Goal interference. It is a painful defeat for France. And if Serbia were flat against Argentina the night, so was France. Maybe even more so. And maybe it's something about Argentina that brings out the worst in their opponents. Maybe we just don't give them enough credit. Cafaro drives in, the ball blocked out to Garino. And if the, if the victory was famous, look at Scola looking over at Ginobili. Look at Luis Scola and look at these players celebrating. This is uh, a Cinderella story. Really, Argentina winning it 80 to 66. They came, they saw, and for the second consecutive game, they conquered. They win it 80 to 66 over France. Kobe, Manu, and the great Oscar, three legends, sitting courtside and watching. And you have to wonder, is it gonna is it gonna stop here, or are they gonna get? Are they gonna do like a? a an impressive trifecta uh, with a victory over Spain in the final. Well, Argentina, Spain is shaping up to be quite the classic. Not necessarily the teams that people have picked to be in that title game, but that's exactly what we're going to get, and much deservingly so for Argentina, especially 
They have played a phenomenal brand of basketball as France have no choice but to walk off with their heads down. They'll have to bounce back against Australia for a chance at bronze. And you see what it means to these Argentina players. And now that you're this close, if you're an Argentina fan, you might as well say, hey, let's go all the way. Hugs all the way around. Basketball is a funny thing, but if the mind is not right, you're already at a disadvantage. And, I, you know, tough questions must be asked uh, when you consider how Rudy Gobert played tonight. I mean, he just wasn't the same Rudy Gobert, same with Devin Fournier. Numbers tonight will let you digest him. Uh, it was just uh, an impressive show all the way around for Argentina. 19 points off those turnovers. And uh, 13 fast break points, just two for France. Yeah, they dominated all facets of the game. Skola, of course, leading the way with 28 points. Deck off the bench with 13. Campasso usually, so I'm sorry, his usual brilliant self. 12 points, seven rebounds, and six assists for him. And the fans have been partying since they got here to China. And the party continues. Look yes. at Scola hugging his, I'm guessing that's his son and his wife. They've come to watch. Of course, they live in China where he plays. Quite an example for his kids, isn't he? And you see now the fans and the players also celebrating. But it's also the humility. It's almost as if they're surprised as you see Ginobili and Scola embrace. And you take a look at some of the highlights, especially of the second half. Every time France looked like they were going to start a comeback, Argentina had the answer. They hit big shot after big shot. 9 of 25 from 3 on the night. Frank Nilakina, really the only bright spot for France. He goes 16 points on 7 to 12 from the field. Fournier finishes with 16. They're just 6 to 17 shooting. It was a tremendous run. Their execution was just uh, superior. Their defense was excellent. The rebounding out rebounded France as well. They just dominated every facet of the game. Only nine turnovers. Again, taking care of the ball. What a thrill to be here for this. And then the final on Sunday. Can't wait for that. Of course, tomorrow more action to come. USA facing off against Poland. Where does the self-belief come from for this Argentina team? I mean, it's you can see it. You can see it in their eyes. You can see it all game long. And even if they don't win the next game, it's been an incredible summer for them. But, you know, I mean, they, they'll they have to like their chances. There's Scola. He's doing everything. He's hitting three-pointers. He's getting out on the fast break. He's defending against those bigger guys in the low post. And you see uh, Ginobili and Scola embracing. What a moment that is. Just, yep. And Scola, he did not want to miss this, did he? I believe his plane landed at 2 o'clock on game day. Unfortunately for him, he didn't have the same traffic that we had yesterday. Of course, he may have come in by helicopter. You see the emotions from these players. It's, uh, it's why the World Cup is the greatest event in basketball. I mean, Scola is in his fifth World Cup. This doesn't seem possible to well, play at that level. It's not just that level. He's playing at the premier level. So here we are. Argentina and Spain win it. They will battle for the Naismith Trophy. And it'll be France and Australia in the third place game. It has been quite a day and night here in the Wukasong Arena. Thanks for watching, folks. One last time. Argentina win it 80-66 to over France.